Valerie Young's retinal tear is just one example of imperfections in the design of human eyes. Another occurs because nerve cells and blood vessels evolve to lie in front of the retina, where they interfere with its ability to form sharp images. It's like trying to take a picture through a foggy piece of glass. And the optic nerve itself evolved to connect to the brain through a hole in the retina. So the eyes of all vertebrates have a small blind spot right near the middle of the visual field. Evolution starts with what's already there, tinkers with it and modifies it, but can never do a grand redesign. So even the eye, with all of its optical perfection, has clues to the fact that its origin is of the blind process of natural selection. Darwin believed that what he called an organ of extreme complexity, like the eye, could evolve by small steps, given enough time. Any trait that improved vision would aid in the search for food, or a mate, or in the avoidance of predators. So natural selection would most certainly favor those traits. And what Darwin was able to do was to point out that you might think in logic that it's difficult to imagine a set of intermediary stages between the simplest little spot of nerve cells that can perceive light to a lens forming eye that makes complex images. But in fact, these intermediary forms do exist in nature. At the University of Lund in Sweden, zoologist Dan Eric Nilsson has developed models to show how a primitive eye spot could evolve through intermediate stages to become a complex human-like eye in less than half a million years. Yeah, I've been interested in eye evolution for a long time. I mean, in particular, I've been interested in the question of how long time it would take for an eye to evolve. Nilsson envisioned a sequence of stages by which a flat patch of light-sensitive cells on an animal's skin could evolve into a camera-type eye. As a first step, nature would favor any changes that made the flat patch more cup-like. As soon as you've created even the slightest depression in the center, it means that the, the um, edges of the cup will actually shade light from parts of the environment. And of course, all the light-sensitive cells in this little cup, they won't measure light in exactly the same direction. So already this cup has some pictorial information. Another model demonstrates what a primitive cup eye can do. The brightly lighted skulls cast an image onto a translucent screen Nielsen installs at the back of the cup to act like a retina. But the image is not at all well defined the cup eye can do little more than detect movement. This kind of eye can be found in nature today, in flatworms. Their eyes evolved no further. In their environment, that's all they needed. But if the animals need to move faster or evolve to become fast predators or to see other fast predators, then the construction needs to be improved. And one way of doing that is to constrict the opening to make it smaller. That's just what happened to creatures like the chambered nautilus. Over thousands of generations, natural selection favored those with slightly more constricted eye openings, which focused light more sharply. This worked well up to a point. Since this strategy of making a sharp image also has the drawback of creating a very dim image, it's not very popular in the animal kingdom. And uh, there is an alternative solution, which is, has become very popular in the animal kingdom, the solution that we use in our own eyes, and that is to put in a lens. Nielsen's model lens uses two thin layers of clear plastic. 
He can inject water in between them to make the plastic windows bulge out like a convex lens. This mimics what natural selection might have done over a few hundred thousand generations, favoring animals with a rounded, transparent layer in their eyes that cause light to be focused more sharply on the retina. So we can make it gradually from no lens at all and just continue to inject more water, making the lenses bulge more and more and the image becomes gradually sharper and sharper. So we can go all the way gradually in very small steps from a simple uh, pigment cup eye, which has barely got the ability to determine the direction of a light source, all the way to a complete camera type eye of the same type as we have ourselves. And that is really exactly the way eye evolution must proceed. The extreme complexity of the eye left Darwin in a cold sweat, he wrote to a friend. But still, he was convinced that an eye could be formed by natural selection. He later wrote that eyes must have evolved by numerous gradations from an imperfect and simple eye to one perfect and complex, with each grade being useful to its possessor. Nature, unaided by a designer, could produce an organ of seemingly miraculous complexity. <laughs>